We need to talk quite urgently, and this video could make you a ton of money. We're going to talk about an upcoming possible short squeeze for Tesla and for the whole entire EV space. Some of the short interest numbers that you are seeing on Tesla, Rivian, and other names are out of this world. Now, a lot of people don't think Tesla has another big catalyst until earnings. But we actually have a massive catalyst this week that nobody is talking about. On top of that, we're going to dig into this catalyst and how these numbers could ultimately come out. So we're going to go ahead and get straight into it. I hope you guys enjoy what you're about to hear and I hope it makes you a lot of money. Speaking of money, if you like to make it and you want to make more of it and you want to reach financial freedom as quickly as possible, this could be a good place to start by hitting that subscribe button as well as the like button to stay up to date with all of this information every time a new video is released. Now, some of you guys might not know this, but Tesla currently has the highest short interest that you have seen in two years. If you are a viewer of this channel, then you know full well that Tesla is more prone to a short squeeze now than you have literally seen in years. A matter of fact, the last time Tesla stock rallied three and a half percent, short sellers lost eight hundred and sixteen million dollars off of a measly three and a half percent move well this catalyst this week could give you a much larger single day move we're talking five to seven percent i think at the bare minimum now short sellers so far this year have lost 12.68 billion dollars in mark to market losses in 2020 short sellers lost 10 billion in mark to market losses They've lost more now than 2021 when Tesla stock was hitting all-time highs. It's because the amount of shares that is currently sold short now is so much larger than what we've seen then. A matter of fact, in the month of June alone, short sellers are down $5.05 billion. That is almost the entire market cap of Roku sitting at about $8 billion. Short sellers are getting slapped in the face. Short sellers on average are down 80%, not including their cost to borrow fees. If we take a look at Ortex, you currently have almost $26 billion worth of short positions. That is up 55% in just the last three months. Three months ago, you only had $16.5 billion worth of short positions. So it's grown exponentially as of recently. You're currently sitting at 96 million shares that are sold short. Now, when you really started to see the shorts piling onto these short positions, Tesla was at $120 per share. That is where you've seen about 60 million shares sold short. And now you're at 96 million. So not only are they down massive and they have these massive short positions, they also shorted at prices that Tesla is not going to see again as far as delivery numbers show us, seeing record after record getting smashed. Earnings is going to be another big catalyst, not to mention the catalyst for this week if margins come in better than expectations. Oh boy, you want to be long in Tesla. Tesla is not the only stock in the EV sector that has seen some upside pressure on their shares recently. Rivian, after beating their delivery estimates by quite a good margin, pretty comparable to Tesla's beat, Rivian has rallied aggressively. Short sellers, same story here, have not even started to cover on their Rivian short positions. Rivian, although it's not as comparable to Tesla, you have less than $2 billion worth of these, of these short positions, you're still getting a lot of shorting activity. All of these EV names could benefit massively this week if this catalyst is as bullish as I think it will be. That big catalyst is going to be CPI. Now, a lot of people are forgetting that EVs, automakers, they are the ones that get hurt the most when inflation goes higher 
And they're the ones that stand to benefit the most when inflation falls. And that is because of Fed policy. If inflation comes in as I expect it will, and I'll give a little bit of kind of my estimates here in this video, well, that means the Fed's not going to have to keep rates as high as, as they are projecting that maybe if inflation falls faster, we'll get rate cuts faster. That does a couple things. It allows for higher valuations for automakers, especially your EV companies. But ding, 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 it makes financing costs a lot cheaper. Now, specifically for Tesla, we know Tesla is looking to start their own financing branch. So if interest rates do fall because inflation is falling quicker than what we expect, that could mean better numbers for Tesla. That could mean squeezing shorts from short positions quicker, and that could ultimately mean new all-time highs a lot faster than a lot of you expect. As far as the current estimates from the markets for CPI coming on Wednesday, you're expecting basically across the board for inflation to fall. You're expecting a huge decline on the year-over-year -year inflation numbers for the month of June. You're expecting year over year, to fall to 3.1% from last month's rating of 4%. That's going to be a huge decline. That's a decline of about 25% in a month. That would be great news. Core inflation, you're expecting that to fall to 5%. Core inflation rate month over month, you're expecting that to fall to 0.3%. Let me tell you right now, if core falls more than expectations, let's say my personal opinion, I think core could come in at 0.2%. That's 2.4% annualized. That is lower than where the Fed thinks core inflation will be by the end of this year. If that happens, you're going to get a lot more talk about a soft landing and you're going to get bond yields falling and that's instantly going to benefit borrowing cost. Essentially how this works, if you take a look at the 10-year treasury yield, this is what dictates your financing cost for the most part for auto loans. Because think about it, are you going to lend me money at 4 or 5% if you can go out and get a risk-free yield from the government using a 10-year bond at 4%? 0.07%? No, you're going to charge me a lot more than that because that's the risk-free yield. You're going to want a premium because I am not risk-free and the government is deemed to be risk-free. So when these yields fall, so does the essentially the, the rate in which you're going to pay for financing. It happens instantaneously. That's why mortgage rates fluctuate so much. The one problem with this CPI report is that markets are expecting headline inflation month over month to actually reaccelerate. Markets are expecting the month over month headline to come in at 0.3%. Last month's rating was 0.1%. So 0.1% is 1.2% annualized over a 12 month basis. 0.3% is 3.6%. That's a very big difference. One's good, one's bad. If this even comes in at 0.2%, that's 2.4% annualized. That is a number that we could live with and to be quite honest with, we would be happy about. Now, leading signs for inflation are very good. I'm not just making these estimates up out of nowhere. If you guys take a look at the Zillow Rent Index, compare this to CPI Rent and CPI OER. You'll see this red line is the Zillow Rent Index. It has been consistently falling, and you have seen the rent indexes, uh, part of the CPI, actually flattening out as of recently. This could be the first time you actually start to see rent prices falling, which is a core component of CPI, or at least core CPI, if that does happen and it starts to follow trend with the Zillow Rent Index. That's going to mean these numbers could fall by more than expectations. And that is what I am thinking is about to happen. Not to mention that gas prices. This is why markets are expecting headline month over month inflation readings to come in a lot stronger than last month. It's because in the month of June, you've seen the average gas price $3.57 in the U.S., Last month, the average gas price, 
was around $3.48. So you're, you've definitely seen the price of gas go up a little bit, but I don't think this is going to have as big of an effect if you compare this to other things that have fallen as well. If you look at gas, sure, it's going to hurt your month over month readings, but it's not as bad when you put the other things that are also incorporated in headline CPI. Now, the broad market sold off quite aggressively on Friday towards the last hour or so of trading. It was a pretty aggressive down move. The reason for this is simple. We're heading, we were heading into this upcoming week and you have big inflation reports. And it has big implications for Fed policy and where bond yields ultimately go. Financing costs, the odds of a soft landing or hard landing, all of that gets changed by the CPI report. So at this point, you've seen a lot of stocks do well in 2023. By a lot of stocks, I should really say your big tech names have done phenomenal. You've seen profit taking in a lot of those big tech names that drove down the broad markets. And you could see this on Monday and Tuesday. If that were to happen and you do get some weakness to start off the week before this inflation report, that is likely a good time to buy the dip in names such as Tesla. I don't want to play the broad markets here, but EV has been doing very well. All EV companies, essentially, besides NEO, they've all done very well. They all beat on their delivery estimates. Even NEO beat, hardly, but it was still a beat. That is where I would want to position. They have the most to benefit if CPI comes in weaker than expectations or even right on expectations. Even if inflation comes in right at expectations, that would still be a year-over-year -year reading of 3.1%. That is something the markets could live with and the Fed could stop raising rates, and they might not have to raise rates again. That is instantly going to give all of your EV stocks a very green day and likely many green days to come. Specifically for Tesla, the big day is going to be July 19th. That is Tesla's earnings. I'll tell you right now, margin expectations in between 8 and 10% for net margins is far too low. Last quarter, Tesla was at about 13.5% net margins, about 18% overall margins. These numbers are far too low. We haven't seen price cuts. There's no reason to expect these, but analysts are still expecting them. So that means any weakness here, likely after earnings, is going to be followed by a massive rally and even leading until earnings. If you get a positive CPI report, and this has the positive effects in which I've mentioned in this video, it makes sense for shorts to hedge out their bearish bets by one, buying some calls, two, buying some shares of Tesla. Not to mention, you have recently seen a golden cross, the RSI has reset, and you are now in a bull flag pattern, which could take Tesla stock based off of historical averages for bull flag patterns to about $322 per share. That's upside of about 18% from here. And that could happen before earnings. After earnings, you could be well higher depending on any good news that is announced and everything else that goes alongside Tesla's earnings. We are also going to get the start of earnings season this week. You don't really have any huge companies Besides Thursday, Delta, Pepsi, Progressive, Cintas, and Conagra brands pre-market, but it's Friday, that's the big day. JP Morgan, United Health Group, City, Wells Fargo, State Street, BlackRock, these are big players with trillions of dollars of assets under management. We know these banks passed their stress test. That's not an indication of if earnings are, are going to be good or not, but they passed it. Probably going to have decent earnings. This could also be another pretty bullish catalyst at this point. If the banks are doing well, then I'm sure a lot of other companies are also doing well. But there is that chance that banks come in with really bad earnings and it spooks the markets. So let me bottom line this. I think inflation comes in softer than expectations. Even though if we come in line with expectations, that would still be 
a very large decline on your month over month and year over year numbers, that's going to be plenty fine to give especially your EV stocks room to run from here. Now, given you're seeing such a massive degree of buying pressure on these EV names last week, especially Rivian, Tesla at points it was quite volatile tesla actually dropped about two percent last week but it was still not a bad week you're sitting at close to that higher end level and you've also have a lot of bullish technicals going for us everything we've talked about here in this video it's been pretty bullish there's not too many negative things to say about tesla and other, these other names but you're also getting a lot of bullish option activity and positioning for this friday with some of the most active strikes obviously being the calls look at these green circles it's nothing compared to these red circles the 280 285 290 and the 300 calls are seeing excessive buying even on the red days excessive buying this could likely take tesla if we do have a positive cpi report and it comes in lower than expectations up to about that $300 mark. Although Monday and Tuesday, you could see some weakness. So if you think CPI is going to fall more than expectations and you wanted to make a trade on it, that's your personal opinion. If you guys want to see the trades that I am making every time I make a trade, link down below in the description of this video. Sign up for the Patreon. Come trade with us over there live in real time. Then some of your names such as Tesla or Rivian could be very good choices to play this up move. I would be weary, weary of Rivian just because they've rallied so aggressively every single day. But Tesla has a lot, a lot going for it. You've seen a reset lately. And that could mean for another upside rip. So if you guys liked the perspective provided to you here in this video, if you learned something or you want to stay up to date with everything happening every single day, hit the like button subscribe to the channel. Check out the links down below in the description of this video as well. Like I said, trading community, come trade with us live in real time every time we make trades, as well as if you want to get yourself some Tesla merch, link down there as well. And Weeble, get yourself some free money if you have not done so already. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day or night, and I will see you in the next one.